All right, here we are, we're done. So we've removed all this material and we've placed it all over here now. And what I'll do, what I've done is I've dressed the back of the, the swale here with a nice, with a nice angle there and the front here. And then I've just leveled off the top, like I said earlier, is you don't want it to come to a peak in the middle. You want to level this off so that when you put your fruit tree in here, you've got a nice flat area to work with. You can still, for the first few months, water here and the water's going to actually soak in to the depression that you make there. Um, you can place fertilizer on there, it's going to stay there. So it just it's really important that you just come along and you run uh, a level through there. This, this is only about oh, 500 mil wide, that's plenty. And that'll just give you um, something nice and flat to work on. And you won't be fighting against gravity and everything falling off. Uh, as you as you establish your trees the other thing I've done we've got a one width of a, of a shovel all the way through there about 200 mil and that distinguishes the back cut of the of the trench to the back cut of the berm so what that does is it gives you this area of maintenance through there which if I show you over here, it gives you this area here, which going forward in time, you've constantly uh, got this, this space here that distinguishes between your grass and your planted side, um, which you can also, if you get a dry time, you can fill it with mulch. Um, which will, will stop some evaporation. Um, and then you can also, once that material is, is decomposed, you can then actually just grab the shovel, same width, just scoop that material out of the trench and then you can put it on to the fruit trees because it'll be, it'll be well composted. So it just gives you this, this strip, this maintenance strip. I keep it I keep it pretty clear, I don't let the weed grow in it um, and I keep, I keep the mulch out of it um, just because we're, we're pretty good for the dry time at the moment. Now the other thing you want to do is you want to start when you're on the slope and you want to put a few swales in and you want to make the most of that area, you want to go to the the highest fence line on on your property but you want to go to the lowest point on the highest fence line um, that basically what that'll do is that that'll stop you running into your fence so here I've got highest boundary fence at the lowest point and then I'm at the lowest point so as I run the swale out it moves away from the boundary fence. So you're not gonna run into your boundary fence. You're gonna run away from it. And then once you've run away from your boundary fence, then at, a, at another point of reasonable spacing, you can, you can pick up another swale here and you can run that out and then so on and so forth. And you get this staggered, uh, aspect to the to the swales um, which if you're only running them which I do between 10 and 15 meters in length which on on these slopes with these size swales is a good size it just stops you getting any build up um, with with the with the um, lack of discharge um, if you don't have um, a level sill in the middle or something like that and you're just discharging on the end 10 to 15 meters is the is the ideal is the ideal length because it just stops the water pressure building up behind them and you're getting a break somewhere in the middle there um, because you're going to be discharging at the ends and you're discharging at the ends and then 
your your staggered um, setup with your swales in series will allow you to discharge into the the swale below uh, like in this setup here so you've got uh, you'll discharge here will discharge into that swale that swale will discharge into that one that one into that one now you are going to get um, some settling with this material through here as well as you don't want it compacted um, you don't want to go along and, and pack that down you want to keep the air in it because that's what's going to establish those fruit trees initially they're going to be able to make uh, fibrous roots um, very quickly and that's going to make uh, establishment a lot easier so there's no compaction here you've just you've you've leveled this off um, and and what's going to happen is that's going to drop down but as you build material through your maintenance cycles as I've done over here if you've got good regular maintenance cycles and you're always adding material because you've got your plant guilds and you're doing your chop and drop and then you've got your grass clippings for when the dry times when you're not producing the biomass here you're going to be producing grass clippings so they're going to be going on there you've got your chop and drop your biomass if you're always adding material to the swale to the berm then that's going to counteract any settlement or compaction as the settlement occurs it's going to change um, the height to some degree of the discharge so we won't set the discharge now until uh, things settle down and we get a good rain and these these fill up once they fill up we'll see exactly where the water level is um, we can adjust the height down or up um, and then we can make a cut through here we can bring that water onto original ground keep it away from the um, the the fill here so we don't get the the water cutting that out because it's only soft fill we can cut a, a, a bit of a V groove into here and then discharge the water out over here but there's no need to do that now um, until everything settles we get a good amount of water in there you come up and have a look when the water is in it and then we can set we can set the the, the height of the discharge um, in relation to how much water we want in there and um, how high it is uh, on the berm, berm wall because we don't want it breaching in the middle there you don't want to get them too full uh, because if they're not discharging quick enough you'll get a breach in the middle here so it's always best to set the the spillway on the end um, in peak peak flow so wait till you get peak flow and then come up check it all out and then um, establish your levels then so we're now ready to to plant out um, what we'll do is I'll do another another uh, addition to these series on just the planting out um, and how I set them out um, we've got some straw bales here ready to go um, and then we'll get some uh, wood chips in as well or some forest mulch we'll get a bit of fertilizer on there we'll get our fruit trees in place um, and then we want to make sure that we get this covered that's why I have the straw here you want to get the straw on there um, almost immediately because if you do get a downpour or you get heavy rain it's going to stop uh, that light fill which is full of air um, eroding it's going to stop it um, uh, compacting too quickly uh, because when you cover it with the straw these this works to kind of wick a, a lot of that aggressive moisture away 
um, and uh, it just basically covers that, that vulnerable soil. So the sooner we get that on, the better. And then once we get that on, then we can apply some more foresty mulch, which is more beneficial for the plants. Um, I do this method instead of cover crop in the subtropics where you can get at any point in time you can get aggressive rain cover crops just aren't reliable i've found because you've got to wait for germination and even when they do germinate the the root system on them is very fine um, and you can still get in heavy downpours you can still get um, a lot of penetration from from the rain and it can be very aggressive and you can still get some erosion so I've found the best method, cost-wise too, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, here where we are, there's six bucks a bale. And there's got two bales there that'll do that whole berm easily. Um, so that's $12 to basically, um, to prevent um, any erosion at all. That Having them on that berm there, um, no matter what kind of rain you got, will prevent all the erosion, any erosion from happening. And then you can come on later and apply the more beneficial mulches for the plants, such as the woody mulches. Um, so that's just purely just for erosion control. Um, and then once we've got that on, then we can just we can go to town and we can start planting plant plant guilds here in the subtropics. I use arrowroot, pumpkins, nasturtiums. We'll just fill that whole berm up with lots of plant guilds while we let these three extra fruit trees get established and we'll be away. So I'll come back and show you the final film of these all dressed up and mulched with fruit trees uh, shortly. <laughs>